Hey everybody, this is Cody with Old Iron Garage and in this episode we're going to paint this 1980 Corvette. Alrighty, we've gotten started on it. We have wiped and degreased everything. We've got it all sanded down. We've got the door jams painted. Here's a little preview of what the color is going to look look like since we already got the jams done. But uh, so for today, what you're going to see us do is we are going to apply two coats of sealer and then the base coat and then we're going to finish it off with the clear coat. Check it out. down really nicely it only took uh, about three coats three to four coats to lay down uh, and then I came in and didn't cap didn't get it captured on the camera but when I laid down the clear coat I put down three pretty good coats of clear and I what I do is I start with a with the first coat I just lay down a really thin fine coat so that it can get nice and tacky really quick and then after that I put down two heavy coats that's what we normally do here is we try to focus on getting good heavy coats down and then we get that way we have enough to cut and buff and get down to a nice shine and still have enough clear coat on the car when it's all said and done that it will still be very well protected 
so that the client can still drive this thing. It's not just going to be a show car that gets parked in the garage all year long. So we're going to start out with probably a 800 or 1,000 grit sandpaper, and we're going to wet sand it down. We're going to work our way up gradually until about 3,000, and then you'll see us put down the cut and buff. We'll use the buffing tool with, uh, with compound, and we'll get this thing down to a mere shine. So here we go. Dave's doing a great job on the hood so far. I guess it's turned out really nice. Um, what you guys were watching him use is starting out with a, a nib file, basically like this. And what it does is it takes out any dust particulates or fibers or anything that, that landed on the clear coat while it was getting painted. So you just start with this. You just very, very lightly just scuff over it and it will, it will take off that top layer. And then from there, what he started doing, as you guys were seeing, is he what he started out with 1500 grit get, gets the the whole cover nice and wet and he starts sanding it down and basically you just want to keep going until you don't see the orange peel anymore and then from there it's really just sanding out all of the sanding marks from the previous grit and so you start at 1500 grit in this case this that's what we started out with and you work up to 2000 grit and then 2500 and then 3,000 if necessary, and then you can go into your cut and buff. So, keys here are make sure you keep the surface nice and wet, make sure you keep your sandpaper nice and wet so it keeps it clean, and that way you're not dragging debris that you just scraped off with the sandpaper and dragging it across the finish. And as you're working through this and an area dries, or like over here that you're not working on, it's gonna look really foggy. So. Right here, it's nice and shiny, which is from the fresh paint job. Over here, it's all foggy. That is okay. Do not be concerned. Keep going, keep working up in the grits. By the time you are polishing this with a buffing wheel, then it's, it's gonna bring the shine right back and it's gonna be flat and smooth as glass. So keep on watching while Dave keeps working on this.
Trizec pad to take 2,000 grit scratches, 2,500 grit scratches in the clear coat, so it'll make it easy to buff. But lots of water and what? lots of patience. <laughs> don't go too fast. Basically, don't. Do this. Tastes good. That'll be good. Don't, don't go full bore. Dang. Only nice half power and keep moving. Don't stop and don't don't press on your edges. I have like a foam extra additive to make it soft so I can kind of go up and roll around things very easily. You don't have an aggressive edge that way. And lots and lots of water. If you get this thing dry, it'll scratch more than it will sand. Most people, um, if you're pretty new to it, I suggest you take tape and you run tape over your edges. That way you don't wet sand to them. You don't, you don't have any of the problem of cutting your edges or anything like that. That way you can just come right up to your edge and roll right over it and there's no problem because there's tape there and you ain't going to cut through your tape, which will protect your edges. But at the same time, if there's heavy orange peel in your paint job, all your edges are going to have orange peel overlapping the edge however far your tape is overlapped. Go slow, be gentle, and don't push hard on the edge. Do not sand a heavy grit on the edges. That's the other thing I suggest. No 1500s, no 1200s, no nothing. If you're gonna do an edge, just grab 2000 or higher and sand your edge with that. And don't try and sand it with a heavier grit because you're gonna peel too much off way too quickly. Edges already are thin in general because the material wants to separate around the edge. So the corners are not built up as high as anything else on the entire car. You're already thin there. You don't wanna be cutting it with a heavy grit, a light grit where uh, even these foam pads, 3,000, to finish off edges is perfect. Like, I didn't sand any of these edges when I started. These are all, um, I had about an eighth inch down of every edge, and I'm just now sanding over 3,000. <laughs> you guys wash your cars before you wet sand or polish or at least rinse the all the dirt and dust and debris off of it. I usually take soap and water and just use my hand to lightly rub it off. Then I take a squeegee. Squeegee it down. up this episode's video i'm not gonna take up too much more of your time if you guys enjoyed this video please like and subscribe we really appreciate your guys support next time you're gonna see this car it's gonna be all put back together 
and we'll be shipping it out the door. So have a good rest of your day.